The minute physics videos are, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. I make, I, I explain physics in minute-long videos, and I draw stick figures. A lot of popular ideas, like the Earth is flat, turned out to be wrong. And a lot of uncomfortable ideas, like quantum mechanics, evolution, and plate tectonics, turned out to be right. I have a master's degree in physics, and, um, and I'm here at the Perimeter Institute now, and I can just go down the hallway and ask any of numerous uh, professional physicists any question I want. Um, so, but most of the time, I do write the scripts on my, on my own. I do calculations. I'll, do, I'll try to figure things out. Um, and then I just go to make sure I haven't made any stupid mistakes. Your, your symbol, you've got a cool, you know, it's on Twitter, it's on your yeah. thing. Tell me about it. Tell me All about right, why. you want me to show, show you the symbol? Please, yeah. All right, here we go. So there's a P uh, surrounded by an omega. So the real story was that, uh, that I originally called it one minute physics. And omega starts off, you know, and omega seemed like an appropriate letter for that. It was OM was the start of omega. Um, and the ohm is the unit of resistance. Uh, it's represented by omega. So I said, well, I'll take a P for physics and surround it by omega, and it kind of looks cool. Has somebody told me it looked like a salamander one time, like a head and stuff, but really, I didn't really think about it that much. And then eventually, when I, when I actually started the YouTube channel, I don't want to put myself in so much of a box that it's one minute physics. So I said, I'll call it minute physics, and then people can interpret minute as meaning, you know, an order of magnitude of one minute. So it could be anywhere from 10 seconds to 10 minutes, roughly. Pairs of electrons and protons no longer had the energy to resist each other. It started because I was, uh, I was trying to explain some research that I was actually doing, that I had done during my master's uh, on general relativity to a bunch of undergrads, and I f realized that the easiest way for me to explain this was to draw some pictures and draw you know, stick figures. And, and, and I've always been interested in film and video, so I ended up just combining the two. But it is visible to radios and radio telescopes, and even makes up a small portion of the salt and pepper on an analog TV. At the beginning, it was totally for fun. Really, I just made videos as interesting as, as I thought they could be. Um, and it was much more about having fun making videos and sharing awesome, the awesomeness of science with people and not you know, wanting to be successful on YouTube. I thought that that other part was more important. And if, if it was good enough and if people liked it, then it, the success would come eventually. One of the things that I think can be really confusing uh, and detrimental in science videos is when you actually have too many details and too much flashy, fancy special effects or whatever it is. Um, I'd much rather have somebody be, you know, have somebody feel like I'm sitting there next to them showing them this thing on a piece of paper. Um, which is then, if I, if I were actually sitting next to them showing them on a piece of paper, I might go into more details but I, because I could answer questions about it. When I'm making videos, it just seemed more appropriate to, to go for the core essence and ignore the details. So like, that's what physicists do, really. I think that's why physicists sometimes are different from scientists in other areas. Is that physicists, when you need the details, you put them back in, but most of the time you try to get away from the details and get the big picture. It's like if you have a jug with three cups of water in it, it's easy to tell that there are three cups of water, but which is the first cup? Right now I'm sitting next to my light box or light tent or whatever you want to call it. I think it's a light cube. Anyway, uh, I didn't start off with this. I started off with like some white walls in the corner of a bedroom and some white tag board and, and actually these same work lights. You know, these are just like $5 work lights from a hardware store. They're not anything professional. Uh, this is the only professional aspect of it. And I have a camera that I've put up here facing down. It's just a still camera. In fact, it's broken. Like the memory card reader doesn't work. So I have to connect it to my computer to download the images. Like, and so I just take one picture every second while I'm drawing. And that's what we mean when we say that we live in three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. OK, so this pile here is, is just where I put all the finished, I don't know why there's music there. This pile here is where I put all the finished drawings once I've done them. So like here are some, video, or some drawings from the videos about, um, what's this about? Oh, this is about the standard model. And there's you know, the theory of everything. So it's reasonable to think that you might need a lot more than just one equation to describe it all. And so yeah, I just have this huge, all of my drawings, right, I do it on paper. I don't, people think I do this on whiteboards. I do it on paper. And so I'm stuck with all these. I mean, I'm not stuck with them. I'm, I like to have all these drawings now. And I can, at some point, I might do something with them. But at the moment, I just have them. So this isn't even close to all the drawings. This is just since I've been here at the Perimeter Institute in February. Um, so the first, half, the first half a year of Minute Physics is in a pile over there on the other side of the room. So this is my, uh, this is my sound booth. Right now, there's a, there's a helium-filled shark floating over it, which normally is not there. But you can, uh... so. I sit in here and have a microphone and a script. And normally what I do is I have a, another um, one of these cubicle walls that I just slide in front so it's, the sound is really dead. And I sit and I talk and I say something like, Dear Universe, I'm a big fan of yours. You're so fresh and real and I love how you manage to be fascinating day in and day out. I'm particularly impressed by your devotion to the laws of nature and how you stick to them regardless of opinion polls of scientists or the public. So that's, that's pretty much what I do, and I make a lot of mistakes, and I go through and I edit it like crazy. Drawing is so quick. I mean, I draw stick figures. How long does it take to draw a stick figure? You know, you just, 
uh, once the the big the big long part is writing the script. It takes forever to write a script. Um, once I have the script to some place where I feel like it's really good, and I'll I'll read it aloud while I'm writing it, so I can hear what it sounds like. And then once it's once it's done, I'll print it off and bring it in here and record it. Um, and then I go back and edit the sound. Once I've finished the script and recorded the sound, only then do I even start to storyboard out the drawings. And that, the storyboarding process takes maybe an hour for an average minute video. Um, and then the drawing process, if I don't have any special effects, the drawings actually only also take an hour for a minute video. And then I edit them in, and that takes maybe another hour. So it's really quick. The drawing, the whole section of drawings is fairly quick. Although some of it is because when I'm writing the script, I do have pictures going through my head. But I just never write them down because I, I don't have to communicate the, that to anybody else at that point. Do you ever want to be doing it, though? Do you ever, when you're talking about the Einsteins of the world, do you think, do you know what? I wish I was cracking the nuts rather than explaining the nuts. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, there are definitely times when I wish I were, were still doing physics research. Um, but I'm here surrounded by so many awesome people doing really interesting work that I can go and hear about it. What normally happens when I feel like I want to be doing work is I'll, I'll come upon a really interesting question. And I'll say, instead of the, beauty, the, the beautiful thing about physics is once I think of an interesting question, I'll just go home and try to figure it out. And I might spend like a day or two working on something. And sometimes I get an answer if it's an easy question. And sometimes it's a hard question. I, have, I get nowhere. But I actually still do that. And some, sometimes it even comes out and ends up being a video. Pick a few elementary particles, set them on a high energy collision course, and bam. For me, the, the important thing is, is the content. So I don't care, really, if I, my face is in the video. It's very easy for people like uh, Michael of Vsauce and, and Destin to just have a talking head when they get to something really hard. When they get to something they don't have a picture for or something they can't really visualize, they'll just show their face and say, blah, 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 blah. And to me, um, that's an easy way out. And it, a lot of times, I'm really jealous of them. But at the same time, uh, I, get, I get challenged by that. And I have to figure out. And that's, that's the part that I, it's both challenging but really satisfying to have to figure out, how can I visualize this thing that I have no idea like, when I just think off the top of my head, how, how am I going to visualize it? Now, there are, some, there are funny things. Like, I've been hanging around with YouTubers like Derek of Veritasium or um, Destin. And, and Michael Vsauce, and everyone recognizes them. You walk around, and people on the street even sometimes come up and say, hey, you're that guy from the internet, right? And I've, I have never had this happen, which in many ways is nice, but other times, you know, like you get free ice cream out of it and stuff. So people recognize you, and they're like, hey, I, I recognize you. You come into my store, or, or you know, come into my house, or whatever. In this, in this case, I don't get that. So it has, its, it has its benefits and its drawbacks. But also, I don't feel like I'm very good on camera. Maybe I just need practice, but I'm not a, I'd rather be I'd rather be explaining people and showing them visuals that, that help convey the, the message and the science rather than showing my face. Sincerely, a collection of atoms known as Henry.